Let's now do a couple of examples of the Laplace transform. And I would like to remind you L of f of t is the integral from zero to infinity of f times e of minus st dt. So for instance, let's calculate the La Laplace transform of one. So the constant function one, and for this, let's just use the definition. So it's the integral from zero to infinity of one times e of minus st dt. And that becomes the integral from zero to infinity of e of minus st dt. And if you differentiate e of minus st, a minus s comes out. And therefore, when you integrate e of minus st, you divide by minus s. So this becomes e of minus st over minus s. And again, that's because we're integrating with respect to t. So that's from t equals zero to t equals infinity. And now remember how to evaluate such an improper integral. You take the limit. So this is the limit as t goes to infinity of e of minus st. st over minus s and then minus e of minus s times zero over minus s. That's for the t equals zero part. And essentially, you may ask, what is the limit? Essentially, the answer is the limit will always be zero in those problems. But more precisely, we always choose s so that that limit is zero. So here we may assume S is positive. This will never be a problem in practice because in our differential equations, it will always be that way. So then we get zero minus, and then uh, one over minus S. So in the end, we get one over S. So in other words, the Laplace transform of the function one is just one over s. Or once again, in terms of pictures, what does the Laplace transform do? It takes this constant function one and you apply L to it and it transforms it into a hyperbola. So s, because then that becomes one over s. Kind of cool, huh? In the same spirit, let's do the Laplace transform of e to the 2t. And you'll see Laplace transforms, they love exponential functions. Well, once again, by definition, that is the integral of e to the 2t times e to the minus st dt. And again, exponential functions together, they're like bread and butter. So integral from zero to infinity of e of two minus s t dt, which again, just like before we divided by s, here we divide by two minus s. So it's e of two minus s t over two minus s. And that's from t equals zero to t equals infinity. And once again, to evaluate t equals infinity, you technically take a limit. So limit t goes to infinity of e of two minus s, t over two minus s, and then minus e of two minus s, zero, over two minus s. And once again, you pick s so that that limit is zero. Again, don't even worry about it. So here it works as long as s is greater than two. So we get zero minus one over two minus s. And we get in the end that the Laplace transform of e of two t is 
1 over s minus 2. And in fact, this is always true. So if you want to do the Laplace transform of e to the a t, so the Laplace transform of the most delicious function, the eating function, that is 1 over s minus a. And this will be valid as long as s is bigger than a. And by the way, don't worry about memorizing all those formulas. So on the exams, I will give you a Laplace transform table with all those formulas. And so once again, to illustrate this with the picture, if you have e to the a t and you apply the Laplace transform, it still turns it into a hyperbola. A, and then this is 1 over s minus a. And so just a very quick example, okay, unless I tell you to rederive it, you can just use it directly. So E of Laplace transform of E of minus 3T. Now you can just say it's 1 over S minus minus 3, and that's 1 over S plus 3. And don't worry about specifying the domains. The next example you will see is really fun because in fact, let's try to evaluate both the Laplace transform of cosine and the Laplace transform of sine. So we're literally killing two birds with one stone, but the mathematical. If you try to do it directly, it would be Laplace transform of cosine 2t would be the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine 2t e of minus st dt. And you would cry a lot. Because technically, to evaluate that, you would have to integrate by parts twice. Instead, let's use the cool pi -am trick. So it's a bit of an oxymoron, but cool pi -am trick. Yeah. Because remember, Laplace transforms, they're really nice with exponential functions. So instead of calculating Laplace transform of cosine 2t, consider the Laplace transform of the exponential version. Laplace transform of e of 2ti. How come? Because on the one hand, We, since we have a complex exponential, we may use Euler's formula. On the one hand, and well, the Laplace transform of E of 2ti, again by Euler, this is the Laplace transform of cosine 2t plus i sine of 2t. And yes, the Laplace transform is a linear function. So linear transformation. So you may split it up like that. And again, that if you want, you can use a definition for that. I times Laplace transform of sine of two. Which is good because this tells us that if you know how to calculate the Laplace transform of E two T I, you will somehow get both the Laplace transforms that we want, the one of cosine and the one of sine. On the other hand, we know how to calculate Laplace transforms of exponential functions. So on the other hand, 
If you use the formula Laplace transform, transform of e to the at is one over s minus a with a equals to i. What we get is the following. So Laplace transform of e to the 2ti. Well, that's the same thing as Laplace transform of e to the 2it, right? e to the at. which becomes one over S minus two I. Now, this is not very palpable, right? It doesn't tell us much, but that's because I is on the denominator. And just like the famous mathematician, black pen, red pen says, I don't like to be on the bottom. So what we do, we just multiply both sides by the complex conjugate, which is s plus 2i and s plus 2i. 2i and s plus 2i. And then what we then get is again s plus 2i over s minus 2i times s plus 2i to i and then on the one hand we have s plus 2i on the other hand we have a squared minus b squared so s squared minus 2i squared but this becomes s plus 2i over s squared plus 4. Not minus 4, but because of the i squared, which becomes minus 1, this becomes s plus s squared plus 4. And then in the end, if you compare both sides, you then get Laplace transform of e to the 2ti equals s over s squared plus 4 plus 2 over s squared plus 4i. Want to split it into real imaginary parts, you'll see why. Because if you remember what we did with Euler's formula, this gives you a Laplace transform of cosine 2t plus i times the Laplace transform sine of 2t. And then this gives you s over s squared plus 4 plus 2 over s squared plus 4i. And the beautiful thing is, as I alluded to, you only need to compare the real and imaginary parts. And then miraculously, both are answers that we want to call out. So step three, compare. And indeed, you end up getting Laplace transform of cosine 2t is s over s squared plus 4. And Laplace transform of sine of 2t is 2 over s squared plus 4. How nice is that? We can have nice things sometimes in math, believe it or not. And of course, you may guess this generalizes. So it turns out that the Laplace transform of cosine at, so instead of 2, we have a, is s over s squared plus a squared. And the Laplace transform of sine of at, well, we had two, but now we have a, so a over s squared plus a squared. And once again, those are formulas that will be given to you. But 
the pictures look quite nice. So one looks like almost like a tangent function, I would say. So this is S over S squared plus A squared. The other one looks a bit like a bell curve, kind of like this. And of course, last thing I want to mention, so the Laplace transform is linear. So if you want to evaluate Laplace transform of 2 sine of 3t plus 4e to the 5t, this is 2 times Laplace transform of sine of 3t plus 4 Laplace transform of e to the 5t and using our formulas, that becomes two. So the way I like to re remember this is sine is an odd function. So the Laplace transform becomes even. So three over S squared plus three squared. So S squared plus nine plus four, and then one over S minus five. And this becomes six over s squared plus nine, and then plus four over s minus five. And I know I said finally, but now really finally, uh, it's sometimes useful to do this in reverse. And this is what's called a La inverse Laplace transform. So example, and this is again, what's called an inverse Laplace transform. In other words, again, here we have a function, we apply Laplace, we get something else. Inverse Laplace transform asks which function has a certain Laplace transform. So which function has Laplace transform? At two over S minus plus one and then minus four S minus. In other words, if you see two over S plus one minus four over S minus three, where does it come from? It's the Laplace transform of what? And well, notice those are hyperbole. So using, so it smells like exponential functions. So using Laplace transform of e to the a t equals one over s minus a, we get that two over s plus one minus four over s minus three becomes the Laplace transform of two e to the, so one is minus minus one, so e to the minus t, and then minus four e to the three t. So our answer is two e to the minus t, two e to the minus t minus four e to the three t. And you'll see in the differential equations that we'll solve, we will need to do both. Find Laplace transforms and also figure out which function has a certain Laplace transform.